Welcome to our virtual artist talk for our current exhibition, A River Flows Through Us. My name is Tabitha Watson, and I am joined today by Janet Stradichuk, one of the featured artists in the exhibition. Uh, thanks for joining us, Janet. Well, good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, virtually, but you know, we yep. take what we can get. <laughs> um, so to get started, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your interest in art? Uh, sure. Um, I don't. It started very early. Like I, I, I don't remember sort of preschool stuff, but once I was in school, it was like drawing as much as possible, especially horses. Um, we have had an amazing grade three teacher that if you got done your work in class early, you got like a exercise book cut in half and you could do anything you wanted in it. And I don't think I've still got any, but it would have been like a series of like horse like sort of stories, but visual stories. Um, and that continued on forever, um, got into sort of more formal instruction in grade nine. My mom begged a woman that, uh, taught oil painting in depressant. The life of me, I can't remember her name. Um, and she wouldn't take people that kids that young, especially girls, because she said, you know, they fool around a lot. Mom was like, oh, she'll be serious. So I took lessons with her in grade nine and 10 and then grade 11 got busier. So art sort of went to the side but it was like a great introduction to oils and uh took art through high school decided to go into geology because I knew I couldn't make money at art <laughs> and plus two geology was like it was out of left field and uh I was like no I want to kind of pursue that until it either proves that it's not the thing for me or whatever anyway I finished got that degree promptly moved out west um had little stints like in the 90s, late 80s, early 90s. I did some courses at Emily Park when I could, and then work got insane, so art went to the wayside again. But throughout, I was taking a lot of photographs with the, and, and there was always the, almost every photo, it was like I could see a painting, future mm -hmm. painting. On it. So there's a ton of material I have from, through that whole period. And then it was, um, when I started to have to come back to Cambridge to see my mom, sort of after 2010, because my dad passed away that year, um, I was coming back quite often to see her, and then it increased more and more. And I think around 2014, um, Pat had taken a session on urban sketching, and she and I started going out, and then we would go out with the uh, the region people. And I had never done anything plein air up to that point. And so that was amazing to first off get back into just straight drawing, but from live subject mm -hmm. matter. And then starting to play around with watercolors, which of course is the total opposite to oils. So that was a bit of a struggle for a while. Um, but yeah, just sort of, you know, getting back into doing things and um, sort of getting to the point where it was like, you know, okay, it's time to start, you know, work, work slowing down. Uh, you know, now I'm sort of semi-retired ish. Um, and now I can sort of finally start concentrating on the art again, full time, mm -hmm. pretty much full time. So yeah, it's been, and then, um, I'm trying to think about other things. Actually, when I was in Prince George for a period of time, that would have been, that would have kicked off the period from the eighties to nineties. And I actually did a lot of painting then and got into more painting my own subject matter whereas when I took the lessons in nine and ten you're always copying stuff mm -hmm. from another source and it was just to learn the techniques and that and that's it. but it was in a bit after that that I started you know doing your own thing mm -hmm. but um for this show I decided to try acrylics because I'd been introduced to them actually from a course at Homer Watson uh, I think it was around 2014 I took a a one-day workshop and uh, so I thought for this show, I would, I would concentrate on the acrylics and um, also to uh, had to move back to Cambridge 2016 because mom went into long-term care and then basically stayed at the family house until she passed. And then it was time to go to Nova Scotia, which I've been hoping to do since 2013. So now that I'm here, it's amazing. Like the number of artists and activities and things um you know trying to get it 
you know, getting going on a few things. In fact, was in a little show last month. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, it's been kind of, and then too, just even studying art history, that's been just a continual thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so. my husband and I have just figured out that our grandmother drew, and we never knew this. So his son and even he himself, they're both into painting heavily. And, you know, we often thought, like, where did this come from? You know, <laughs> so, so finally finding out what she did, you know, and probably never had any time to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, but at least there was, you know, some background now that we found out about. <laughs> yeah, a family history of art. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, so thinking about, you mentioned a little bit about this exhibition already and um, experimenting with acrylics and stuff. Um, can you tell us a bit about your inspiration for this exhibition? Once we, once the four of us established the theme and it kind of came together pretty quick, really. Um, I think I immediately already had ideas. Like I initially, I, I thought I would do a mix of uh, some acrylics on canvas and then some ink and watercolor works. And I had initially envisioned I would do some uh, ink and watercolor on site of uh, historical buildings adjacent to any of the Grand River watershed waterways. Um, and then I would do some landscapes in, with acrylic and canvas. And then as time went on and I was starting to pull together uh, source material, it sort of became obvious that it, it would be mainly landscapes just acrylics on canvas mm -hmm. and the um, subject matter. I mean, most of my stuff for this show is, oh God, a very short walk from my parents' house in Preston. Uh, we lived beside, you know, just by the Speed River throughout my whole uh, childhood. And the confluence with the Grand River is just over behind the Catholic uh, separate school. It's just by the high school as well. And that's, I don't know, like maybe 200 meters from the house-ish, 200, 500 meters. I meant to actually look on a map to see what the distance <laughs> is. And what's wild is three of my pictures have is, are of the same tree. And it's yeah, a tree. I like those river. ones. <laughs> like they've, they've naturalized the, the bank, river banks now. Whereas before, the banks were all bare other than these willow trees that have grown. And I remember one time, funny, I think it was on a walk in 2014, got through some of the underbrush and found this tree again. And I remember fishing beside it years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's more works to come of that tree because it's just an amazing tree. <laughs> it's just so cool. But, um, and then, yeah, I finally thought, okay, I've got to include the confluence. It's like this sort of spiritual place for uh, everybody that grew around, up in that area. And then um, finally, I toyed with the idea for the longest time of trying to expand and do something at least a little bit geographically away from there, but still in the watershed. And so I had a, a series of photos um, from behind Homer Watson, uh, or actually near the bridge there, mm -hmm. and where you could see the Pioneer Tower and different times of the year and the Grand coming through there. So that was sort of my only you know, trying to fit in something else that's not just of the speed or the confluence. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and I, yeah, so I, I've got, I had so many photos to wade through and just figure out, okay, what ones are the, the images that are kind of speaking to me more first, that they wanted to be painted first, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of that, um, you sort of mentioned working from photos a few times. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about your artistic process and how you create your artwork? Sure. Um, because I've had to rely on photography as sort of the only means of expression for so long, um, I find, other than when I'm out uh, doing sketches in ink, like, I, like when I'm doing the fine air stuff, I don't do pencil anymore initially. That's sort of how they everybody was sort of having us approach at first. I like to work in ink right away and have things distorted. I don't want pretty straight lines and stuff, except I tend to do straight lines. <laughs> I have to force myself to distort the image a bit. 
So what I was doing for these works, especially, um, and it seems to be kind of how I'm working these days is, uh, especially for on canvas, it starts usually with a single photograph. I might have a few other photographs of different details, but typically there's, and it's, the image is already there in the, in the picture. Most of the time I might subtract things or shuffle things a little bit, but typically it's true to the original image. And uh, I tend to then start, once I've got the image figured out, um, I'll then usually do a fairly dark background across the canvas. Typically it's a really dark orange that I seem to be doing. I just naturally have been doing that, that or a purple. It seems to be one of the two that I go with. And then just start laying the, uh, a bit of a quick grid um, just to get the original image in. And then I still may change it a bit, but at least that's my starting point. And then I start laying the color in and, and going from there. Um, I know with this particular show, um, the first painting I did was that Eventide Speed River. And if I get that one back, I'm going to work on it some more because <laughs> I learned how to do water doing this show. <laughs> or I got any nervousness about doing water. And it was, you know, like I find kept saying to myself, just paint the way it looks. Don't, don't think about it. Just do what's, do what's there. Do what the image is showing you for reflections and stuff. And it was amazing. It was like a bit of a breakthrough. So, yeah. <laughs> the the artist perpetual problem I find yeah. I think so many artists uh, once it's up are like actually I could do oh yeah exactly <laughs> yeah even it's Homer funny, Watson was like, bad for that so I mean it's so obvious looking at that one picture and then looking at what came after and it's just yeah you were still freaking out about water in that <laughs> <laughs> but it's quite nice as a viewer to see that progression yeah. Um, you know, see those skills developing even over the course of one exhibition. So, oh, sure. um, you know, we've got a Phoebe Watson exhibition on at the moment, and it shows I know, some I of wish her I earlier. Could see this person. Yeah, yeah, um, but it's quite cool because it shows some of her earlier works, like uh, some portraits and stuff, which obviously most people haven't seen by her. Um, and you can definitely see how she grew as an artist because you know her early ones are not great, um, yeah. but her later ones, I sort of like didn't anticipate how strong they would be because I hadn't seen them before. Um, so it, it's quite interesting as a viewer to be able to see that. Um, I know as an artist, you just want to get all of them to your final level, but um, but sometimes it's good to appreciate the learning along the way. <laughs> oh, definitely, yeah, yeah. Um, great, uh, so I, we talked about this a little bit, but um, how did you first become interested in creating this type of artwork, um, particularly landscape paintings, I guess? It's, uh, it's just always been there. Um, I, it actually took my cousin's wife, um, because they were looking through some of my sketchbooks when they were out visiting my mom the one day. And my, and my cousin's wife just turned to me and she says, you love trees. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> like, but I guess just looking at it, even when I had images where there was a building and stuff, she said, no, there's these trees there. Yeah. And I think I've always just naturally, I, I've not been interested in portraiture. Um, I, I love seeing other people's work, but I don't do people. Well, I will, I, you know, I can actually, and I can actually do them well. Um, and that comes from, there was always people in horse pictures, so you had to learn how to draw people. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think I just naturally have been attuned to landscape right from day one. I don't know. I don't know if it was from growing up in that area because uh, like our, the street our house was on was originally the last one and you had open fields. Um, you could look across to the farmer's fields, look over to Blair. You could sort of see over towards Dune. Um, it, I, I don't know if it was just sort of growing up in that sort of neighborhood with the fact we were always out and around the river or you know, in, in the areas, um, like sort of we were on the floodplains and stuff. And that's where we were playing as kids. So I don't know if it was just that. Because mm -hmm. um, it wasn't like, oh, I went to and saw the Rockies and it was a religious experience. <laughs> yeah. You know? 
I actually find, I've, I've said to people, I find the people that get hung up with, oh yeah, I want to see the mountains. Yeah, they hit you in the face. They're obvious. <laughs> but what I think is the more subtle, um, say, Ontario landscapes where you have to work at it, sort mm -hmm. of. But the beauty is almost bigger. Yeah. Like, um, and then here, you can be just like the, especially where I am now, it's, it's a lot really rural. So if you're driving anywhere, you're going through like bush, basically the highway yeah. that's cut through bush. Well, oh my God, the, the other day we were coming back from Bridgewater and it was like, there was a painting every second, you know, just outside, yeah. of, you know, it's just amazing. And all it is, is variety of trees and yeah. the, odd, the odd water body. And then of course the ocean's obvious too, but yeah. Uh, Yes, and old build. I do when it comes to buildings. I do like really old stuff. Yeah, um, decrepit things, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Cool. Uh, but it's still pretty. Well, pretty still, it always seems to come back to landscape. Yeah. You know? There's the odd still life thing, and there's the odd uh, like driftwood. I haven't done anything with it for a while. Hope to start, you know, playing around with that a little bit, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, it's it's typically a landscape. It's just yeah. always been a, a love. Well, quite appropriate then that you're exhibiting with with us because uh, you have a lot of parallels with Homer Watts and obviously being very inspired by the local area, uh, his love of trees. Um, also, having gone to other places, he always came back uh, to his home and found the most inspiration from that. So, yeah, actually, yeah. you have quite quite a lot of parallels with him. So. Uh, I guess your art's in the right place. <laughs> exactly. Um, it feels so like an honor to be able to exhibit at the gallery. Like, yeah, and I'm sure Homer would have been happy uh, that his inspiration has carried on and, and um, contemporary artists continue to exhibit in his house, inspired oh, sure. by the same things that he was inspired by. So um, it, it's quite a nice uh, circle of life, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah. So you mentioned a few things that you're thinking of experimenting with in the future. Um, what sort of uh, immediately next for you? Do you have any uh, bodies of work in progress at the moment? Nothing in progress, but things are going to get going here pretty quick. Um, I want to start doing things uh, more Nova Scotia related. Uh, landscapes, I'm in a sit the town that has the most... Um, and I don't remember the dates and I don't remember the numbers, but I think it's got the most wood constructed historic buildings in North America. Like they're the largest concentration of them. It was established in like 1780 something, I think. Uh, it was like a United Loyalist place. And then the, um, uh, the freed blacks came here and settled nearby as well. So it has a lot of history. Um, so I want to get into, again, doing some fine air work and even stuff from photographs, whether it's ink and watercolor and even some acrylic stuff. I do want to get back into oil as well with some of the next bit of work. But I also am toying with an idea um, relating to Maude Lewis. Um, went and saw her show at the McMichael uh, two years ago. I guess it would be now. And I've always loved her stuff. But seeing that show and getting the uh, catalog for it and realizing that, yeah, she did paint from memory, but there's a lot of specific geographic locations that she's remembering and referring to mm -hmm. in a few of her works. So I'm thinking of doing something with that. Like I do want to get over to the Digby and Marshalltown area, mm -hmm. um, go check out the cemetery where she's buried, uh, go to where the house used to be. Um, Pat and I were in Halifax in September, and the art gallery in Nova Scotia that now houses her home um, wasn't open for the few days oh, ago. No. <laughs> but we went into a, an adjacent gallery that seems to have an affiliation with the art gallery in Nova Scotia. And the one lady brought us to a glass door and just looked through. The house was right there. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, so I'd like to do a bit of research that. Um, there's a bridge in Bear, Bear River that she painted a number of times, and that looks like a really awesome location. There's even farms leading up on the road that leads up to the bridge. So mm -hmm. I want to try and set back and try and find these places mm -hmm. and maybe either do 
my version of what they're like now, something like that. I'm still not exactly sure, but I want to do something, you know, relating to the location. That's very cool. Uh, I found, a, I've actually found some information on where her family home in Dartmouth was. It's now a parking lot, but I did find in one document an old photo of it. So I'm, you know, it's like, okay, do I do the house too? Or I'm not sure yet. Yeah. But, um, and then, yeah, and then there's just, you know, tons of landscape imagery I've already been accumulating since 2013. Plus, too, I have a ton of stuff from the Grand River and Speed River still painted. <laughs> like, I've got so many images, um, different times of the day, misty, yeah. foggy. So river it's flows fun. through us, too, then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's it's mixed. And then Pat and I have talked about doing some um, some stuff with the uh, the photographs we took in Italy. Uh, a couple of years ago as well but we, we're hoping to get back and we've talked about you know geez maybe we could put something together like a you know she does some things i do some things and try and pull mm -hmm. together a, a group of works or something relating to that um yeah sort of lots of different ideas and then i've got a ton of imagery from out west like yeah. i'm also <laughs> a Emily Carr fan and i've got a lot of stuff of you know deep in the forest sort of imagery and it's just all this i've just got a wealth of stuff i need to work through <laughs> <laughs> yeah it sounds like you need a lot more time <laughs> yeah but i thought yeah I'll, for the next little bit i'll try and concentrate on those bushes and get that going oh sounds exciting um so if people want to learn more about you and your work do you have uh, any social media or website that they can do that yeah I'm in the process i've got to get a website up um, I have gone on Instagram finally, but I'm still learning how to use it. <laughs> still have to get my bio in there and a few other things, but I did bring in the paintings from this show and I'm going to start, I've, I've left it as a public profile. So I do want to get in a lot more artwork and more information about me. Um, but I guess for right now, people email me mm -hmm. and want to ask questions uh, or to see anything else, but um, I do pepper my Facebook page with a lot of stuff, but it's fairly secure. Mm -hmm. um, and I am, I had toyed with the idea of not doing a website and just concentrating on Instagram, but I'm not a big fan of the whole Facebook corporate. <laughs> yeah. So I'm thinking, you know, Instagram might be a nice tool because a lot of artists are using it, but I still yeah. think a website that I control is yeah. probably the best way. Yeah. But Instagram's I, a great, um, it's a great way of getting yourself out there, but there are a lot of limitations on what you can do with it. So yeah. you know, having a website gives you a lot more flexibility. But, sure. um, we'll sure. keep an eye out for it when it eventually <laughs> comes. Um, so in the meantime, uh, your email is actually on the virtual exhibition on our website at homerwatson.on.ca. Um, so if anybody did want to reach out to you, they could uh, find all the contact information there um, and then keep us posted when your website goes live and we'll sure. uh, try to share that for you. Definitely. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's it's been really great talking to you. Um, thanks so much for joining us for today. I think we'll we'll wrap up now. But again, if anyone has any questions for Janet or wants to learn more, um, feel free to visit our website and uh, grab her email from there. Um, sure. And thanks for joining us.